The story begins with footage of a man talking into the camera. The man is Patrick, who was hoping they would find a group of missing students in the woods, but they have found nothing. We learn that in May of 2013, five college students went missing within the area called Spiritual Woods in Ohio. Patrick says they just vanished. He also had the strange feeling that they should not have been there. That scary feeling lingered within him for the whole day, and he thought he was going crazy. He suddenly heard voices telling him to go somewhere. We see a second message appear on the screen that Patrick cannot tell us. Returning to him, he says at a certain point, a few of their flashlights went missing, while the rest stopped working. Once the sun set, they ran out of the woods quickly. The group certainly did not want to be there when it was completely dark. A third message appears, telling us the footage of that weekend was found. To Patrick, it is very strange to think the students vanished without leaving a trace. He knew a couple of them from school. The fact that the kids simply disappeared instills an overwhelming fear within him. He describes himself as the kind who would laugh upon watching a horror movie. But the situation he experienced felt real. Afterward, the scene changes to a woman, saying she bought her house three years ago. Since the college kids went missing, there have been strange things going on. She lives close to the woods where they vanished. She says how at night, one could hear howling and screaming. The woman has been terrified because of it, resorting to lock the doors of her house more. Additionally, the police have not been able to locate any of the missing students. Later, we see a reporter in the woods. The area behind him has been restricted by the police. He is Bill Bradley, going live with the news. We learn from him that he occupies the spiritual woods where the college kids disappeared. Soon a policeman walks by, and Bill asks if he can say anything about the missing students. Bill has to go off the air for the officer to give him some information. The policeman is addressed as Doug by Bill. The reporter thinks the police department owes him something, so Doug shares that they found three different cameras they believe the students were recording their project with. That is all the information he can share. Moving along, Bill goes live again to interview a boy named Ron. The boy shares how he told the students not to go where they went, yet they did not listen. Ron also claims that whoever enters these woods never comes out. Bill feels weird about this interview, and he cuts it short. At the end of the scene, Ron says he doesn't know why they're looking for the students. He seems certain that they are deceased. Finally, we land on the footage the students recorded before they went missing. The first camera we are seeing from is Taylor's. A teacher in a classroom tells her students if they engage in an extra credit assignment in the spiritual woods, they will receive 50 points on their project. In the library, the group of five students try to figure out what their locations should be this weekend. We see other groups there who reject the idea of going to the spiritual woods. However, the group our main characters belong to soon has two of its members agreeing to go there. It doesn't take long for the rest of them to follow. Later in the day, Taylor watches the group member, Kinsley, near her house, talking to a big guy. Taylor is waiting for her to enter the car. He also hopes the guy she's talking to isn't her boyfriend but her brother. Once she goes inside to grab her phone, the guy starts heading towards the car. He tells Taylor not to let Kinsley out of his sight, something the boy agrees to do. In a short time, Kinsley enters the car, telling the guy to relax because she's going to be fine. When he leaves, she says he is her older brother, John. He is overprotective of, she adds. Arriving at their destination, the duo observes they're the only people there. Taylor says it's kind of creepy. Upon exiting the car, Kinsley gets a call from John. It sounds like he wants to call her every hour, and she slightly complains about this protocol. Shortly after, the rest of the group arrives. As they stand near a castle, the one named Adrian asks if they heard about a tale associated with it. Legend has it that the man who lived there came home one day and found his wife lifeless on the floor. He grieved so much that he wanted to bury her in the backyard, which is the spiritual woods. Finishing this short tale, Adrian says these woods do something to one's mind. If a person manages to get out, they're usually not the same. The group explores the castle for a short time before they exit into another area. Almost instantly, someone yells from a distance, warning them to stop. It is a boy with red hair who runs up to the group and tells them not to enter the woods because people go missing in there. Kinsley is the only one who wants to listen to him. But Adrian, along with the girl named Heidi, says they need the bonus points for their school project. The member Ricky calls the red-haired boy a clown right to his face. He wants to enter and won't listen to what any clown tells him. Thus they walk into the woods. Soon they stop to look back. If the boy is there, he is not. As the group is moving forward, Heidi points to something above, asking what it is. Taylor thinks it could be the kid who warned them, who Taylor calls creepy, although he heard it too. 
Neither of them see anything. Before anything has even begun, Kinsley says she is shaking in fear. While they walk, Kinsley says something happened there a long time ago, and it's not going to make a difference today. Yet Heidi counters her wishful thinking by saying there is a reason a legend would exist. It could not have come from nowhere. Kinsley wants to get out of there before it gets dark. The group stops to look in a certain area that slightly leads upwards. Kinsley simply cannot find peace in these woods, and she wants to go back. Adrian directs the camera onto himself to say that something is out there. They want to enter the area and Kinsley complains about it. Ricky thinks it's the strange kid who is trying to scare them. Suddenly, the footage cuts. We receive a message saying the corrupted video files have been recovered. Once the footage reappears, it is very hazy. They find a rope tied to a tree, prompting them to wonder what the reason behind it is. Though mostly they are trying to engage in their science project by collecting rocks and leaves. Soon they find something even stranger. Certain branches are placed oddly against each other. Kinsley asks what time it is because it has gotten noticeably darker, but she learns they have been there for a mere hour. Ricky says he noticed it too. Kinsley thinks it's going to rain due to the darkness. Therefore, she wants them to hurry. Afterward, the group collects rocks for their project. They use the words sedimentary and metamorphic to describe them. When one of them picks up a rock, something else is revealed. Picking it up, Ricky observes it's a crumpled mask. He thinks it's a cool discovery. In a few seconds, he tosses it. Eventually, the group thinks they've collected enough rocks. Thankfully, the footage changes again to return to the smooth visual. Kinsley says it's getting cold. She collects a leaf for their project and holds it up in front of the camera. As the group encounters a fallen tree, Heidi jokes around by emitting a fake fearful scream. They want to climb over it. There is also a fallen sign there that reads, No Trespassing. One of them speculates that there's blood on it. This brings fear to Kinsley, who wants to leave, all the more urgently. Heidi joins her by saying she wants the cameras to be turned off and for them to go. Subsequently, they climb over the tree. Adrian says it was blood they found, which scares the girls. Eventually, the quintet believes they are lost. After they get on a trail, they discover they walked in a circle. Adrian quietly tells Taylor, this is what happens when girls try to run things. Taylor weirdly agrees with those words. Soon he zooms into the woods, only to find nothing. Heidi asks if anyone has reception on their phone because she does not. Checking their phones, the gang learns they are in a similar situation. They decide to turn off the camera, due to having enough footage for their project. Once it turns on again, we see they are still in the woods. Taylor looks at a tree and says they are heading south. He knows this by observing the moss on the tree. The boy claims to have learned this fact when he was in the Boy Scouts. Adrian highlights the unsettling possibility of them having to stay there overnight. If the group is lost, this is the option that befalls them. Moving along, Ricky focuses on a mushroom growing on a tree branch. He rips it off, saying he will save it for later. Following this, the students come across a rocky wall with messy drawings on it. Whatever it is, it hardly even looks like drawings. Kinsley thinks it was done by the kid who warned them. She thinks he is messing with them. He has all the time on his hands, and all he is doing is messing with people. They believe the ink used for the drawings could be blood. The substance is also on the ground. According to Kinsley, it is a lot of blood for just one person, so it has to be paint. Looking at it though, Heidi says the color is dark red, the kind that can't be bought at the store. Kinsley now thinks a creepy hunter gutted a deer. The girl will concoct any explanation to avoid believing the worst scenario. While they exit the area, the camera cuts to a much darker time in the woods. The daylight has long disappeared. Ricky suddenly claims he saw something. The group hears an eerie noise and turns back to question what it was. This prompts them to walk faster. To cut the tension, Adrian starts talking about the legend he told his friends earlier. What he didn't tell them was that some guards were protecting the man's castle. They didn't want anyone to go into the spiritual woods. Interestingly, the day the man's wife perished, the guards went missing. On the topic of people disappearing, Kinsley says her brother told her that many campers set foot in the spiritual woods and vanished. Soon, Heidi thinks she observes a campsite ahead. Once the gang arrives there, Heidi says they should sleep. Ricky focuses his camera on a circle, made by many cement blocks. The area inside seems to have been used for a fire. We now switch to viewing from Taylor's camera as he walks with Adrian in the night. They are looking for firewood. Taylor mentions how Ricky did not go with them. He thought he was a team player. Upon finding a big stick, Adrian says they will have a good fire. Afterward, Taylor is curious to know what is up with a certain girl in their class. Adrian says she put her hands on him. Heidi, his girlfriend, sits on the other side of him. If she saw it, he knows he would be in trouble. Adrian asks Taylor when he's going to make a move on Kinsley. 
Taylor answers he is trying to find the right time. Giving his friend advice, Adrian suggests he just needs to be smooth. The next scene shows the fire, crackling in all its orange glory. Heidi says if it were not for this flame, she would have lost her life to the cold. Kinsley looks behind them. She thinks she saw something, but she decides to let it go. In a short time, Heidi asks where the boys are, and Kinsley says they are in the woods, talking about Heidi. She also says she isn't sleeping at all. Furthermore, the girl thinks her brother is losing his mind at home due to her absence. The only good thing for Heidi about them staying the night like this is that she could cuddle with Adrian. They laugh before Kinsley tells her friend to not be too loud. The conversation segues into Kinsley mentioning a girl named Vicky. She says the girl touched Adrian in biology class. Heidi is shocked to hear it, and Kinsley says Heidi needs to put Vicky in her place. Soon we shift to the boys. When they hear something behind them, Adrian thinks Ricky is playing a joke. Adrian asks Taylor if he heard about those campers Kinsley spoke of earlier. The boy replies that Kinsley was telling him about them along with her brother. He also says her brother is somewhat crazy, therefore he doesn't know if he is to be trusted. Subsequently, the group is together again, sitting by the fire. Later, Ricky records himself, as he shouts near the tent Adrian and Heidi are in. This action causes Adrian to exit the tent, threatening Ricky with violence. Following this, we watch Ricky walking alone somewhere, while the view is hazy. He complains that no one wants to smoke with him. During his solitary walk, he finds a stuffed bear on the ground. Such an unexpected find shocks him. As he looks at it, a highly luminous being appears near him. It makes him set the camera down, and we watch him walk away, standing oddly with his back towards it. The unknown being picks up the camera, putting its face right near it. However, the face is very hard to see properly. Back to the group. Adrian returns to say he dealt with Ricky. Kinsley imagines Ricky is probably lying beaten up somewhere. Suddenly, we get a missing footage error. We see from Ricky's camera, while it continues to lie sideways in the area he left it. Taylor is now there with Kinsley, looking for Ricky. As they pick up the camera, Kinsley screams in fear upon seeing something. The duo starts running away until they return to the campsite. Travis wonders why the fire is out. He sees Adrian sitting there with redness on his shirt, which is likely blood. The boy is moving around oddly like he's scared. Yet Taylor thinks he is messing around. Adrian stands to point at something, and we see the luminous being briefly. This prompts them to start running. When they stop, Kinsley stands near Taylor, and seems to do something to him that we do not see. After she retrieves the camera, she laughs for some reason. She uncannily tells them to watch Taylor perish. Pointing the camera at him, we see his reddened shirt. As she is walking away, Kinsley says a rhyme, that it started with five, and she made it four. Three tried to run, but she took one more. The last thing we see of this inexplicable happening in the woods is someone in a white dress with a white face approaching the camera. Shifting to something completely different, we see someone named Rob, Taylor's cousin. He tells us that Taylor went missing in May. They did not know what happened for a few days. Eventually, they realized he was missing, so Rob joined a search party to find his cousin. Despite the search, the team found nothing. Rob was scared to venture into the woods and heard the castle that is there was built possibly in the 1800s. He also heard it was built to protect people from going into the woods. But one morning, everyone in the castle vanished. He feels like those woods are haunted. Additionally, Rob heard there is a church in the middle of the woods that no one had ever seen. Part of him thinks it is the place where the gang of students disappeared. They may be waiting to be rescued there. Then we jump from Rob to Aaron. He also has something to say. However, he would rather not talk about it because it frightens him. He narrates how when he heard about the missing students, he tried to look for them. He also tells us he used to frequent the spiritual woods with his friend. They considered it a peaceful place to be in, being there every morning. But as time passed, something felt wrong about it. Aaron felt that someone was pulling him in. It felt like a cold, dark presence was there. At one point, he even heard a voice calling out to him. The man finishes by saying he does not believe in such urban legends. Yet it's one thing to hear about them, and another thing entirely to find oneself in such a situation. The last person we see is Chuck, whose time behind the camera is brief. He says whoever took those students is going to pay. Finally, we see the five students in class, and a missing people poster made for them. 